Hi everyone, in this video we'll be discussing covalent compounds. Covalent compounds are formed from the sharing of electrons. Generally, covalent substances are formed from the sharing between non-metals only, however some exceptions do exist. Covalent substances can exist in two forms. They exist as molecular or network type substances. There are also three different types of covalent bonds which we will learn. The single bond, the double bond, and the triple bond. Let's have a deeper look at how the sharing of the electrons occurs. So single bonds. Single bonds will occur when two electrons are shared between two atoms. The way that we depict it is by a single line between the two atoms. These types of bonds are going to be the most stable. So here we have hydrogen with its one valence electron, another hydrogen with its one valence electron. If we remember, it needs to fill up the first shell which can hold up two electrons. So the way that it works is each of the hydrogen shells will actually come in together such like this and each of them will share their one electron. So it's as though each of them will take turns having a full valence electron. The other way that we can depict it which we'll normally see is we'll just have a line in between each of the H's. Now double bonds will occur when two atoms are sharing two pairs of electrons. As we will expect, double bonds are going to be much stronger than the single bond but at the same time, they're also going to be much more reactive, and that's because the bonds are rich in electrons. Why does this work? Well, if we remember, a lot of the chemistry and the reactions that occur are a result of the electrostatic attraction between electrons in one atom and another atom. So the way that we can depict it is we can depict it as either like this, where we have the four electrons shared together, or we can just depict it using these two lines as we see here. The third type of covalent bond is the triple bond. They are going to be the strongest and the least stable of the covalent bonds. And again, the reason for that is because of the high electron density, which is caused by the sharing of the six electrons. We can depict these triple bonds as simply just having these three lines in between. So the defining aspect of covalent molecular substances is that they exist as these discrete units of molecules and are not tied up in one giant lattice just like the ionic substances. Because of this, this will mean that they'll generally have low melting and low boiling points. They also are not electrically conductive since they do not have free charge carriers. Covalent molecular substances are also not limited only to compounds, but can also include diatomic molecules such as oxygen, such as iodine, etc. So be wary that substances can be covalent molecular without being compounds, this is because compounds must contain two or more elements. The next type of structure is the covalent network structure. They also have this three-dimensional array or this ladder structure which resembles that of the ionic compound. Now we can attribute the strength of the covalent network substances such as their high melting points, non-conductivity and strength to this ladder structure. The same as it was with the ionic substance, the latter structure means that these covalent networks are essentially just one large molecule. So covalent networks, as we said earlier, like with covalent molecular, they are only compounds if there are two or more substances. If it's just an element, then it's not going to be a compound. Here we have two examples. On the right hand side we have diamond. Diamond is a covalent network substance which is created by this tetrahedron structure of infinite numbers of carbon. Because diamond only contains carbon, while it's a covalent network structure, this is also going to be an element. Meanwhile, sand, also known as silicon dioxide, is going to have this tetrahedral structure which is like diamond. This is why sand is going to be so strong. However, sand contains both silicon and oxygen, and therefore this one is going to be a compound. So therefore we can have compound covalent network substances and we can have element covalent network substances. As we said earlier, ladder structures are going to be quite brittle and this is because of the opposing and repulsive effects when these atoms of opposite charge are going to become close together. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. 
Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.